Nort, Sean Boot. This is a compass. It has a simple purpose. It points north. It gives power to whoever wields it, the power of direction. If you embark on a journey, be it great or small, let your compass be your guide. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Contest Chair, my journey began on a special day, the day I was born. <laughs> you see, I was born the first day that man walked on the moon. My father dropped my mother off at the hospital and rushed home to watch the moonlight. <laughs> I was born a couple of hours later and my mother held me in her arms and watched Neil Armstrong. One small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. And she held me in her arms and a heart filled with hopes and dreams for her son. Yep, my parents had big expectations. Neil Armstrong, really? Why couldn't I be born on April Fool? <laughs> but I, like most children, was born with infinite possibility. I could steer my life in any direction. But as I grew, I didn't need my compass. Family, friends, society, they told me where to take my life. I should go to school, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, have children, and retire. And if I worked hard all my life and scrimped and saved, well, life would be good when I retired. My freedom had become an illusion. And my 30th year was telling. When I turned 30, I got engaged, bought a house, got a dog, and a minivan. <laughs> I bought a minivan, I didn't even have kids. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. A few years later, I was rushing my very large wife to the hospital. A couple hours later, I was a daddy, and she was daddy's little girl. And I had expectations. She was going to be an Olympian, a supermodel, and win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> I had one question. Should she win the Nobel Prize for peace or physics? <laughs> I was stuck on a path. And as for direction, I had none. Time flies as it does, and Sarah's five now, and she's not feeling well. I find myself in a hospital waiting room. You as parents, you know that's your worst nightmare. Your child is in danger and there's nothing you can do. You're sitting, waiting, helpless and scared. Please be okay. Please, please be okay. And the doctor came out and our eyes made contact. And his shoulders slumped and his head dropped. Sarah has cancer. I couldn't process what he said. What? Are you sure? Why her? Why her and not me? Let it be me instead. But she's just a child. And slowly, painfully, it's sunken. Sarah has cancer. In an instant, everything changed. I knew that if she was going to get through her treatment, I needed direction. I needed my compass. I had to base all my decisions on what was best for her. And that's what I did. Cancer treatment is hell on earth, and nothing can prepare you for it. Sarah's will last two and a half years and be very difficult. I'm Sarah's father. I'm supposed to support her and protect her. But it is I that have to force her. I have to force her through hundreds of chemo sessions, through transfusions and needles and operations. I have to force her to go through things that no child ever should. And it breaks my heart. I vividly remember one night I lay with her in the hospital. She, she was so tiny. She was too small to cope with something so big. Sarah, I wish I had cancer instead of you. I wish I could go through this for you. I wish I could take all your pain. And she looked at me with tears in her eyes. Daddy, I love you so much. But I wish you had cancer instead of me too. <laughs> We're nearly done our two and a half years of Hell on Earth. 
Sarah's almost finished her treatment and she's winning her fight. She's healthy and strong and proud. And going through this changed me in so many ways. I found my life's direction. I'm going to give Sarah the best life possible. Be the best father I can be. I'm not going to scrimp and save all my money for retirement, but enjoy life along the way, because you never know what happens next. We lock our valuables in a safe, but waste our time. I don't want to waste another second. I found what's important to me now and for my future. And you know what? I made a simple decision to follow my compass towards it. And that decision made all the difference. And for the first time I can remember, I feel free. Who here feels that their life is moving by itself? Who feels stuck on someone else's path? It's as simple as making a decision. Find what's important, use your compass, and regain your freedom. As for myself, I'm on a journey of my choosing. I found my compass, and you know what? It's here, not here. My compass points to what's important to me. My little girl. Sarah is my true north. And I have finally taken one small step for a man, one giant leap in my life. My own